So I always have to ask the question at the end. I mean, everyone knows what the question is going to be. But so what, what, what is a woman? What, can you define the term? I think the answer to what is a woman is um, a person who aligns with feminine traits that we traditionally associate with females or that people that align with the feminine side of the spectrum. So that's my answer. Um, and I think that answer should, uh, the definition of everything changes over time. And okay. as All we right. continue to learn more about what humans can really be, um, I think that can continue to uh, grow. And I hope, I hope you understand that. Is the woke community living in an alternate reality? Let's find out about the guy who shut everyone up with a question as basic as humankind. Define a woman. Ha, huh, Matt Walsh. Once again takes down some woke people by asking them to task in a debate that's both shocking and downright hilarious. Ah, huh? can you believe how far some people will go to defend their beliefs? A comedy show where logic gets left behind. Or are we really going to pretend that woke means ignoring common sense? Join me as we break down this wild encounter and see how Matt serves up some major reality checks. Starting off with his documentary What is a Woman? That took the world by storm. Matt Walsh sets out to explore the tricky topic of gender identity by asking a simple question. What does it mean to be a woman? He interviews many people from everyday folks to so-called experts and quickly finds that defining a woman isn't easy at all. Ah, the answers he gets range from serious and thoughtful to downright silly, often avoiding the question altogether. Some people say a woman is anyone who identifies as one, while others stick to biological definitions, creating moments that feel more like a game than a serious discussion. E. This film has sparked a lot of debate, with some viewers cheering it on as a bold challenge to modern ideas about gender, while others see it as a frustrating oversimplification. Social media is buzzing with reactions, there are memes, arguments and deep discussions. No matter how you feel about it, Walsh's documentary has become a big talking point, pushing people to rethink their beliefs and engage in conversations about gender today, whether you love it or hate it. One thing is clear, the discussion about what it means to be a woman is far from finished. What if a man decides that his, his gender identity is his woman? A woman has its own duty and a man has its own duty and a lady cannot duty the duty of a man and a man cannot do a duty of a woman. Can a man become a woman? No. No? No. What about a transgender? Eh? Transgender? No. No? It looks like to, if you want to become a lady but you're a man, you have something wrong in something your wrong. mind, something wrong in your family, something wrong in you. What about if someone was non-binary? Come again? Non-binary? Uh-huh. You know, like non... Like I, someone is... is I, you're not a woman, you're not a man. Yeah, someone's like, someone is, is neither, there's something else, is that... He's saying we have never seen things like those. For a man, he has a penis. For a woman, he has a vagina. So we know this is a lady. This is a man. What if it's a woman with a? What if it's a woman with a penis? Both. Is that? and tabo. <laughs> People are laughing. Is that, is that a dumb question? <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when a guy with a beard art argues with another guy with a beard about what it means to be a woman. But here we are. Define itself just doesn't work, right? I mean, saying a woman is a woman doesn't really help anyone understand what that means. Um.
So let's break it down with real explanations that actually make sense. Seriously, a guy on stage rocking a full beard, loop earrings and high heels. And somehow they're calling Matt Walsh the extreme one. I mean, come on, this world is just wild. It's so crazy to see what people consider normal these days. It makes you wonder where the lines are drawn. What do you guys think? Moving on to a recent debate, Matt Walsh was asked by a pro-trans professor why he cares so much about transgender issues. He calmly replied, I care about children, and these crazy ideas about gender are being pushed on kids. And that really bothers me. Let's see what happens when he lets her speak. But once he got the chance to talk, she started interrupting and making noises, which shows she might know her argument wasn't strong. Was I? No, Pokemon. It's frustrating to see people like her creating confusion and problems for everyone else. Ah, Matt stays cool and makes his points clearly, which is why I'm glad he represents conservative views. When she attacked him with the question, why do you care so much? It felt pretty hypocritical. Instead of having a real conversation, she seemed more focused on interrupting him than discussing the issues at hand. Matt is spot on with his perspective, and it's great to see someone stand firm on important topics like this. It really makes you think about the kind of conversations we're having today. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. The drama goes on with our next story as a trans person challenged Matt Walsh on the definitions of woman and female. During their discussion, they pushed back against his views, arguing that gender identity isn't strictly tied to biology. How would you define a woman? Because you've asked other uh, people up here to define how we would define a woman. How would you define a woman, Mr. Walsh? Uh, an adult human female. And how don't trans people, how doesn't a transgender woman fit that definition? Female. Because they're not, they're not female. They, they, they have, they have, you said that you are a biological male, correct? I said I'm transgender. Um, I might be intersex for all we know. About uh, almost as many people in the world are transgender as intersex. And well, a lot of people don't know. Well, but that's a different conversation. Intersex, that's a genetic anomaly, that's a medical condition. So let, that's a completely different conversation. That's also not a, that's not a third gender. That's just a, that's a genetic anomaly that occurs within the sex binary of male and female. Um, a, so you, what you're saying is that a quote unquote trans woman is a female. By the definitions I'm familiar with, yes. So how would you define female? Through my training in healthcare, there are several different categories for how we define sex. People bring up pr chromosomes. People also bring up hormone levels. People bring up all sorts of other categories. Lots of people don't fit neatly into a gender binary, even people we don't consider to be intersex. It's a complicated spectrum. It, it's not complicated, but you also didn't, you also didn't define, so, so what is, what is a woman? What is a female? What do, what do these words mean? It's complicated, and I know you're not going to like that answer, but that's because there are no simple answers in human biology. Let me ask you a question. You guys, well, you hang question. on. I, just let me finish. You guys like to bring up high school level biology classes a lot. I get that a lot. But people who go on to more complicated biology classes will talk about sex as a spectrum. It's not. It's not. Well, biological researchers would disagree with you. Well, and they're full of shit, the ones that would say that. There's, look. There are... All right. There are male gametes and female gametes. Oh, I had one, I had one last question. I, I just had one, I had one quick... Can, we, can, we, can you come back for one second? Because this is an important question. You said you're an EMT. Look how Matt is going to destroy the person in a few seconds. I, mean, so I, had, one, I had one last question. I just have one, I have one quick, can, we, can, we, can you come back for one second? Because this is an important question. You said you're an EMT. Yes. Okay, if you're responding, you're responding to a, a health emergency. Biological male, somebody with a penis is, uh, is having a medical emergency. And they say to you, um, I think I'm having a miscarriage. Would you, would you 
check them to see if they're having a miscarriage? Would you consider that a possibility for them? Look. <laughs> no, but that's because some people don't have body parts. Doesn't mean they're not a woman. Okay. Sounds like we've established there are some people who in principle can get pregnant and there are some people who can't. So there's two categories, otherwise known as binary. Lots of women can't get pregnant either. Yeah, but they're still of the nature to get pregnant. The only but reason- But they can't get pregnant. Yes, but Truth they... matters, right? It, it does, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. Truth matters and they can't okay. get pregnant, I... that's the truth, so how are they still women? Because they are, for, for, this, for the same reason, for the, for the same reason that I, that I can rightly say that human beings have two legs. And if a person is born with only one leg, that doesn't call into question the statement that human beings have two legs, okay? A person being born with one leg doesn't mean that now legs are on a spectrum and we can't say, we can't say anything at all about how many legs a person has. Who knows, they could, have, they could be a centipede. You know, they could, have a, they could have a hundred legs. No, we know human beings have two legs. If a human is born without two legs, something went wrong. They were supposed to have that second leg. Something went wrong. If you, if you, if you meet a person on the street who only has one leg, maybe, maybe they had an accident. Maybe they were in war. Maybe, maybe, some, you know, maybe they were in a car accident. Maybe they had cancer, a leg was cut off but you know that something went wrong because of the, by their nature, they're supposed to have two legs. Same thing for a woman. A woman by her nature can get pregnant. A man by his nature never can. So if you meet a woman of childbearing age, say she's 28 years old and she can't get pregnant, you know automatically that something has gone wrong and she can go to the doctor and find out what that thing is, even if they can't fix it. So that proves that women by their nature can get pregnant because the simple fact that she can't shows you that there is something Wrong, this is what is known as the exception that proves the rule. Whereas if a male with a penis can't get pregnant, no doctor on earth is gonna run tests to see what's wrong with him. Because they already know it's that he's a male and there's only male and female, those who can get pregnant and those who can't. So, I, that's it, that's The look on Matt Walsh's face when he had to admit he didn't think a man could have a miscarriage was priceless. It's funny how many LGBT supporters say that regular people aren't open-minded enough to understand these issues. Fetuation, it feels like the opposite is true. Imagine using real women who have infertility problems as a shield to argue that men can be women. I mean, seriously, people might go like I'm a man and I know I can't get pregnant. Maybe I should go get some tests to figure out what's going on. This whole situation shows how messy things are in our generation. People seem to have lost touch with basic facts, and it's wild to think that laws are being made to protect feelings that might not reflect reality. Hey, it's important to have open discussions about these topics, but it gets tricky when emotions take over logic. While we need to find a balance between understanding different perspectives and staying grounded in facts, what do you think does it spark any opinions or ideas? Let's discuss in the comments, shall we? Next up in this circus, we have a self-righteous leftist trying to debate Matt Walsh about gender-affirming surgeries for minors. Yes, we checked it twice, but he couldn't back up his argument with any data. As a result, Matt quickly took control of the discussion and made short work of the whole thing. How do you think they would have large-scale, long-term studies about the effects of these drugs and these surgeries on children when we only started doing it to children at a large scale a few years ago? So how could that even exist? Yeah, I think scale is probably one of the more prevalent challenges in these studies. Okay, so we're already hearing that there are challenges in these yeah, studies. Yeah, every study has challenges. Like, any scientific truth, like all of the scientific proof that we take for granted today, they're built on methodologies that fundamentally are flawed. Like, if you want to make a specific critique, you can do that. If you're talking about I just did. Well, if you're talking about sample size, there are very well-demonstrated statistical results that don't need 10,000 people to get, like, a significant, a statistically significant benefit. Here, yes, no, you do. You and here's, here's... No, absolutely not. It's like a very basic statistical Jacob. fact. Here's no, you can, like, Jacob. A sample size greater than a thousand that can uh, like that has very nice asymptotic properties. Like, 
Jacob, here's, here's what I know. If you want to even begin to claim that a study has proven that castrating and sterilizing little boys helps them in the long run, then you would need to have a large sample size of children who've gone through these procedures and we've checked back with them in adulthood to see how they're doing. Those studies do not exist. They can't exist because we weren't doing this to kids at anywhere near this scale even five years ago, let, let alone 10 years ago. What that tells us, Jacob, is that the, the kids we have right now, they are the sample. Okay, they are the experiment. We are we are experimenting on children right now. That's just demonstrably. You can easily demonstrate that that's not. And are you, Jacob? Are are you able to just use your common sense as well? I mean, you can rely on studies, and you can just shout the word "study" at me, and then start. You can start. Let me let me finish. Let me finish. You can you can shout about studies and, and list random medical organizations. That doesn't impress me. There was a time there was a time when, when every medical organization would have told you that you know bloodletting is the way to cure every disease. Um, there, there was a time when every medical organization told you that the vaccine you know stopped transmission. So, but here, here's here's what I want to know. Are we able to just use common sense as well? And, and, and based on common sense, determine that it is certainly not a good idea to sterilize and castrate children and remove body parts from children before they are possibly old enough to consent to those procedures. Can't we just, don't we know that just based on basic moral decency and common sense? Sure, but you're trying to make cost statements about the impacts of medical interventions. Um, you need to demonstrate that with science. And I'm not mentioning, and I'm, I'm not like making an ethos argument or like look at this organization. I'm saying that there are like very rigorous ways to substantiate your claims. And the people that are spending lots of time are doing that. And what they, and they come to conclusions that are very different from the ones that you say. Uh, I'm not making an appeal to ethos. Anybody can look, look up these studies and just see how they're done. Right, and and these are also these are also studies being done by the people who are who it just so happens are profiting from the procedures that they say work, which is really interesting. But to see adults openly supporting kids transitioning, we're talking about kiddies here. Ah, uh, let's think about this for a second. Kids can't vote, smoke, drink, or drive because they're considered too young to make those choices. And, so, but when it comes to making decisions that could affect their entire lives physically and mentally, that's totally fine. It's really disturbing how committed people like Jacob are to the idea of kids undergoing surgeries and treatments. What really gets me is his trust in the professors who conduct these studies. He refuses to acknowledge that corruption and greed exist, even in the academic world. Our own politicians are selling us out, yet he thinks these professors are above all that. Think about this, if someone says, I don't like my arm and I want to cut it off, they get psychological help. But if someone says, I don't like my breasts, I want to be a man, they're applauded for being so in touch with their feelings. It just doesn't add up. What do you all think about this? Well, Matt Walsh's debates with the woke crowd show how wild things have gotten. Can you believe some folks argue without facts? This is like a game of hide and seek where logic is always hiding. Keep questioning everything, who knows what absurdity we'll uncover next. And that's a wrap, folks. If you enjoyed watching Matt Walsh take on the woke community, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It's wild to see how far some will stretch their arguments, right? Keep your eyes open and your brains engaged, because who knows what kind of nonsense we'll uncover next. Let's keep the conversation rolling, drop your thoughts in the comments. Did Matt nail it? Or did the Woker crew put up a good fight? Either way, it's always entertaining to see logic and emotion collide. Thanks for tuning in, and catch you in the next video.